clarification for myself, um, and an advocate maybe for you, what advice would you give the governor um, to make this one specifically happen to end the holdup? Well, I, you know, I think the governor knows uh, how important this legislation is. I think, uh, you know, not overplay his hand. Um, I, I hope that he's not looking at this as, you know, uh, he may have more power or less power or whatever. It isn't about that. Um, I think that every one of us who is elected and has an elected election certificate to come here and represent Minnesotans uh, understands how important that is. And, and we really need to put first uh, what Minnesotans need and, and what's good for Minnesotans. And I think if the governor sets politics aside um, and, and really focuses on what's good and right for Minnesotans, um, he's going to sign this bill. And, and we're going to have a good conversation about the other things that are on his list. I haven't ruled any of those out. Uh, I don't like a lot of them. I think that's not a mystery to anybody. Uh, but we're going to talk about those things. If they're important to him and he thinks they're important to Minnesotans, we're going to have a good conversation about those. Uh, but I also am going to hold him accountable to his word that this bill won't be used as some sort of uh, hostage to get leverage on other things. And uh, those things are wrong. And, and to use uh, you know, relief for uh, veterans or college students as some sort of political leverage, um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to play that game. Um, and if the governor wants to play it, I can't save him from himself. Um, and and uh, I think he's going to end up doing the right thing at the end of the day, literally at the end of the day. Um, but uh, it's going to be in his hands. If, if I could, Mr. Speaker, to the gentleman's question, I think the governor should sign this bill because uh, it's his bill. Uh, his proposals that I carry as a courtesy, many of those items are in this bill. If you would have ever told me that we would pass over $100 million for a working family credit, I would have said that's not going to happen. You look at the conformity to make the department work better. You look at the just the policy and technical things. Maybe not everything's so technical in that bill. The department needs it. I took his provisions. See, in my world, there's three numbers. There's 68, 34, and 1. I have to have 68 votes in the House, 34 in the Senate, and one governor to sign it. And you know what? If you don't put part of the governor's bill in there, he's probably not going to sign it. But it's there. It's there. 68, 34, and 1. And being former president of Summer Sunbeam Sports Club, I can count to 68. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. And so Senate provisions are in this bill. House provisions are in this bill. There was not one dissenting votes from the Senate DFL and very few from the House DFL. This is, you know, because I had to get to the one. I knew I could get to 68. I've got great support from my caucus. I knew I could get to 68. 34, a little more dicey. Now, how do we do that? Well, we did it. And I give kudos to Senator Rod Scott, my DFL counterpart in the Senate, and Chair Ann Rest. And the conferees on both sides were amazing. We had Swidzinski, Pulowski, Draskowski, Barrett Ski and David Ski. <laughs> we had them all. We had them all. So the reason, to your question, sir, the, the reason the governor needs to sign this is because number one, it's the right thing to do. It's many of his provisions are in there. Why? Because I need to get to that one. I need to get to that one. Second question: Do you not feel that the governor honestly feels that if he needs everything he wants, that's for the people of Minnesota? Do you not agree? that everything he wants is good for the people of Minnesota. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm still hung up on the fact that he said he wasn't going to hold this bill hostage to get that one. So uh, we haven't even really engaged a, a lot on uh, you so know, I'm asking the, what, the, what the list you, of demands. What do you um, believe? I believe that he believes that those things are best for Minnesotans. Uh, but I also, you know, believe that, uh, you know, when I when I watch Schoolhouse Rock, a bill becomes a law by passing the House of the Senate and getting signed by the governor. So mm -hmm. the governor can't be absent during the legislative session, during negotiations on, on the end of the legislative session, mm -hmm. and then veto things and just demand that we, we redo the whole thing over again. I will remind folks, we got our work done. We passed a bill, a huge bipartisan bill uh, that was, uh, you know, took a lot of work and a lot of compromise to, to get to, and now it's sitting on the governor's desk. We did our job. The legislature did their job. Now it's time for the governor to do